Yes, today we are joined by Glenn's Vodka, Scottish Premiership Manager of the Season. Once again, our mate Ange Postacoglu. Fourth time. Yeah, uh, mate. I, 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 I was just going to say we picked up on it. Yeah. Would you class as his mates now? Still two um, creeps. It depends what you class as the term, mate. Mate, but not in my. Uh, <laughs> what do we need to do? How many of these do we need to do before we're mates? <laughs> yeah, a few more, a few more. Well, if you think we're creepy. He was actually going to bring a set of handcuffs to keep you here. But, <laughs> but was pink fluffy ones, so we thought you better leave them. Very good. Very good. What a season he's had. Oh, incredible. How have you been, mate, away from football, though, first of all? Oh, thanks for asking, bud. Um, yeah, I've been good. I, I've, it's been a good year. It uh, feels like it's been a long year, to be fair, because maybe because of the World Cup break as well. It's just, I just get the sense with everybody, you know, it's you, you kind of get into this last month and you're going, you know what, it's it's been a long year, but um, enjoyed it. Uh Lads have been brilliant, mate. The, the team's been really good and, and that sort of helps things. And um, yeah, it's been a good year. Has it been an easier year this year, Anton, than last year because of what you came into, uh, obviously winning the league last year, the kind of squad that you'd assembled by the... Not really, because it's, it's just different. You know? like, like, yeah, so, sort of last year, obviously, we, fair to say, we probably caught people by surprise in terms of how we were playing and our, our, our sort of progress this year. You go into it knowing that you're not going to surprise anyone and then... Yeah, you know, the boys have already sort of been successful. So then you're going, okay, are they going to want to push on to another level? Are they going to get complacent? So there's all these, so it's always a different, every season you start, you, you know, you still start at the, the sort of on zero points along with everyone else, start line. And then, you know, there are different sort of challenges you have when, once that race gets going. But, um, you know, the things that you're kind of alert to as a manager after success, um, you know, we're, we're all pretty solid for me. Like, you know, the boys came back, they were in good condition. They, they were working hard. They wanted to be better. We kind of strengthened in terms of the people. So, um, so it wasn't easy, it was just different. Saturday was an incredible day, trophy day. How did you celebrate? Me, personally, um, mate, I went home, I sat on my couch and um, I got a nice uh, glass of whiskey. And, oh, uh, what kind of whiskey can I ask? I don't even know which one yeah, I opened up. Yeah, I, 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 I think I, I mentioned it in some interview early on when I was first here that I did like a drop, and uh, I get a weekly delivery from some <laughs> random person of you know, some nice little stuff. Your dad, does it? Dad. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Um, drink, um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that that was it, mate. And, and to be honest, we had a function um, that night, uh, just the staff and the players, and. Uh, you know, I willed myself to get down there just to, to, to sort of at least show my face. And How do you know you like that sort of stuff? It's not that I don't like it. It's just, you know, I just think, yeah, the people are there to relax, mate. They don't want me around. So, you know, and, and to be honest, I'm, I'm quite happy. So after about an hour, I sort of went back home and, yeah, that was it. That was my night. I did see your, your missus and your two boys were on yeah, the pitch. That must be special for your boys being that age, getting to Yeah, that, 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 that's brilliant. You know, that, that's a bit odd. That's my kind of celebration, you know, having the boys there and, and obviously my wife and, um, you know, the boys are an age now where they kind of understand, they can, they can enjoy it and, and just to share it with them was, um, so that, I, you know, I love that bit, but like I said, once I got home, I was quite happy to just sort of relax there. Did the boys get pictures with the players? Do they still ask for autographs at, at no, they, stage? They, they, they're funny, my boys, because um, kind of, you know, that somehow they've understood that, you know, well, it's pretty clear I'm not a player, so you know they, they kind of know there's there's a difference between me and the other guys. So they're not, yeah, you know, they they obviously love what I do and they love the club, and uh, but they're not fans as such of individuals. They kind of just keep to themselves. They just love football. Mm. See, in the summer when the season finishes, can you completely switch off? So you, could you go a holiday and the phone goes off, or are you still right? No, nah, yeah, you can't you can't switch your phone off because ultimately you got responsibilities there. So I can switch off. I mean, I. I I definitely want a break and I will have a break, but you, you never sort of in a space where, you know, you, it's not somewhere in your consciousness and you keep, I'd be more stressed if my phone was off because right. I'd be thinking, what if somebody's trying to get in contact with me about something important, right? And, and so having it on, it means, you know, I don't have to answer every call. Like if I'm busy and I'll see who it is, I don't, well, if your number comes up, which, <laughs> which, which won't happen because you don't have my number, um, you know, I don't have to answer it. And, and very few people have got my number, to be fair. So um, that would be more stressful for me. So, but, but I can definitely switch off and, and sort of spend time with the family. And, and I need to, you know, I, I enjoy it. But your mind's never far from me, you know. What do you do? Do you go back to Australia or do you go nah, to No, no, no. We stay on this side of the world. So, you know, we kind of, we, we end up in Greece for a, a, 
uh, probably the majority of the time, but you know, we, we might go to another sort of summery place because Australia, the trip's too long, mate, and it's winter now there anyway. So, um, so we, we kind of, we'll stay on this side of the world. So did you never get back to Australia at all, really? Well, we did this year because of the trip. Um, and then, yeah, I, I doubt I will for a little while, mate. My, my wife and, and my boys go back probably around Christmas time for a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't been back for a while. It's been a few months been back now with the since the Champions League. How do you look back at that as a whole? Just, uh, um, I think we, you know, we went into it and, and I, I was pretty sort of strong on us measuring ourselves against the best, right? So, you, and to do that, you, you know, I've said all along, you can't just go in there and just try and survive because you never really learn anything apart from the fact that they're great teams and they're probably better than you, right? So my thing is, let's go in there, um, try and do what we do on a weekly basis, obviously against better opposition and see where we measure up. Now, we, we fell short in quite a few areas. I mean, results wise, definitely. In terms of the games itself, there was times where, um, you know, we were very, very competitive and we did stuff that we do on a weekly basis. We we learned that you have to take your chances. We learned that, you know, what the opposition will. Um, and there was little things in there, I think, that we could take away that we could implement on a weekly basis back here, that, that stuff that, if we did what we learnt from that experience on a weekly basis in in the Premiership, it'll make us a better team. So still stuff that was relevant, and we and we took that. You know, I think our form sort of since then has been um, really really strong because we've taken some of those lessons we learnt and implemented them in, into the Premiership. You know, just stuff about how we organise ourselves in transition, how we you know the kind of opportunities we created. We 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 sort of um, you know changed our attacking sort of patterns a little bit to to become a little bit more um sort of aggressive with with our running and where we got the ball into these areas because we felt that if you want to score against the best teams you gotta you gotta be really brave and get into certain areas you know just crossing the ball in without thinking about it is it going to do it so yeah. and because of that i think that's why we scored so many goals so we, we we definitely took away the measures we used that we use now on a weekly basis which we say you know what their champions league measures so even if you win the game quite comfortably, um, you go, did we do these things? So we learned a great deal from it. And does that experience in the Champions League, does that influence your recruitment come of summer? Is it Champions League players that you're looking for or is that hard to do to get players in? Yeah, to well, well, it's hard to do because Scottish League. not only that, but I just think it's a unique thing where you have to experience it. So I, I think the players who experience this year will be better players anyway next year, you know, because for most of our guys, that was even, you know, their first sort of, game at that kind of level you know so when you look at it you go well those guys after that experience after the way they developed the last six months next year they'll they'll be better prepared for it so that's what we were looking for but you know our, our recruiting and our transfer business is still about making ourselves stronger so can we continually as players leave try and bring in a player who's going to make us stronger than the one who's left which is not easy because it's not a sort of exact science and uh, but for the most part, I think we've done that. So, but I think the experience itself, you know, make will make us a better Champions League team. So, if you're talking about bringing in Champions League player, you're looking at somebody who's actually played in it. And and for us to to kind of try and bring players who are playing at Champions League level, it's still out of our range. Yeah. What about in terms of your preparation for Champions League games? Do you prepare differently for playing against these bigger teams than you would with a Scottish side? Not really. No. I mean, you know, because again, I I, I want to. What I keep imparting on the players is that we've got to prepare the best way we possibly can. Why should we prepare differently if we're playing Real Madrid or playing, you know, whether it's, say, Ross County or Livingston or Aberdeen or Rangers in the Premiership? Why wouldn't we put everything into being the best we can be in any game we play? So if all of a sudden I started bringing out all these, you know, whiz-bang things that, you know, new things, I think, you know, we're playing Real, so we're going to do this and we're going to prepare like this and we're going to, you know, use this new tool and everything, you know, I think the players will scratch their heads. So processes are the same we're trying to prepare the players every week to be at a certain level what we did have after the champions league was we had real measures to say well physical and and around the tactical stuff to say well we can hit these marks doesn't matter who we're playing you know or you know if you're winning three nil you can cruise but we're not going to hit those physical marks so if we're going to hit those physical marks every week mate we've got to be going at it doesn't matter what the score is who the opposition are yeah does that annoy you though when people say that <clears throat> maybe you need to sort of change your style in Europe or play a certain player or does that annoy you when people say that? Because the chances you did create, they were there to win the game. 
No, I mean, I, I've had it my whole career, so you can't end up ignoring it because you've, you've got to remember where I started, right? So where I started, you know, was you know, probably below premiership level in terms of, you know, when I first started into management, I was, it was a semi-pro sort of competition, but I still wanted to play that way. And ever since then, always the, the only thing that people keep telling me is because invariably my career has taken me sort of a level up every time, or you can't do it at the next level, or you can't do it at the next level, you can't do it at international level. And what I found is you can, you know. So I, I've had no reason to change, you know. I, I've never had a spell in my career where, you know, success hasn't come or it's been a struggle. Like even the, the times where maybe we weren't winning, I still have enough evidence there to say, no, look, we're, we're heading down the right track. And Champions League is an example of that because, okay, I, I get it, you know, people will look at the results and say, well, how can you consider that progress? But, you know, there were elements in our game against the very best which stacked up pretty well. Our job is to lengthen that time that we, we do that, take our opportunities, limit the opposition. And, you know, the gap will always be there because of the nature of the competition, but there's no, no reason why we can't chip away at it. We were actually seeing, we've never actually seen Celtic in the Champions League or Europe actually playing in the front foot like Huntman, though. No, it's usually so sitting. Sitting in when we say Celtic beat Barcelona, which is an incredible result, but so everybody behind the ball sort of counter attack now and again. But I mean, Real Madrid, the first had dominated. And what was the, what was the away game? Outstanding, was it Shakhtar? Shakhtar, Shakhtar, Shakhtar yeah. unbelievable that they're, game. They're the disappointing. I think the two Shakhtar games are the two disappointments because I think they were games we should have won. You yeah. know? And, and again, there's a lesson in that for us that, you know, um, particularly that, you know, like I said, the Shakhtar away, we were rolling control of the game. And, and even Shakhtar at home, you know, we, we obviously knew of Mudrik's threats and, and we conceded, I think, three or four goals in the Champions League from offensive set pieces, either a corner or a free kick we've got because we just weren't switched on as we should be, because in the Premiership we get away with it. Mm. Basically, you know, if, if we swing in a corner and it gets cleared, we're okay. But there, you know, swing it in, gets cleared, it falls at Mildred's feet, mate, you're picking the ball out of the net. So there was lessons in that, and since then we've been much better. But you've yeah. got to experience that, you know. Course, so, right. so that was the, the disappointing thing for us is, um, you know, I think those two games we probably should have got something out of them, but like I said, they were lessons learned. See, you're talking about these great teams that you're playing against. What uh, what teams do you enjoy watching when you're sitting on the couch? Who do you, what teams just um, now do you enjoy watching on the telly? Yeah, it, it's, it kind of varies. I mean, <clears throat> look, invariably, I, I kind of get attracted to teams that the, you know, play on the front foot want to score goals are, are sort of more attractive. So, you know, you look at you know, whether that's Man City or, um, you know, Napoli or, or teams like that at the moment who play fairly aggressively and Brighton were outstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was he the Shakhtar Same manager to yeah. He was, yeah, yeah, before. Right. Before, yeah, before he went to Brighton. So, so yeah, so you kind of, you know, um, looking at those kind of teams more than anything else. But, you know, I think in all elements of games, like even when they're, they're not playing that way, you, you're kind of always looking for stuff that, because sometimes it's not a whole game, it's just parts of a game. You go, geez, you know, I've never seen that before. You know, if a team's building up and they're building up a little bit differently, you know, and that always, it always fascinates me because then I think, well, do, can I use that? You know, is it relevant? All those kind of things. So you still think that at your age that you look watching another team and say, can that's I use that? my age, mate. What do you mean? <laughs> no, that's, not, that's, not, that's not nice at all, is it? No, what, well, you're 65 now? <laughs> <laughs> so you're still looking at teams and still thinking, like, how do I develop? Yeah, can I, because yeah. I love that. That's, that's, that's what I love about football, you know. There's, in any game, if you look at it in isolation of just, you know, just a game of football, there's stuff in there. Sometimes it's just individual. You see a player and you go, what a player. It could be a crap game, but you go, oh, what a player. Or there's stuff in that that you go, that's interesting. I haven't seen anyone do that. Now, most games are run of the mill and, you know, you kind of know what's going to happen. But, you know, every now and then something pops up and, yeah, I'm always intrigued by it. Mm. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I know. But he just thinks sorry. Yeah, but you shouldn't be apologising for <laughs> it. Sorry, yeah, I shouldn't be apologising. <laughs> <laughs> we, we played the Celtic B this season um, and they were, they were incredible. Now, the thing is, when we played the reserves, we would win the majority of our games, but it was based on sort of being the best, best players, players in the country. Yeah. I've never seen a I don't know if you were one of the best players in the country, I think you're maybe being a bit generous to yourself there. I was hoping, I was hoping. <laughs> but the style was almost identical with the first team. Yeah. That must take great, a great satisfaction to see that. It's it's fantastic and credit to Darren and, and, and Mick. Now, the whole reason for doing that is not because, you know, again, it's my belief that there's only one way to play a game because that's not what I think. I think there's so many ways and the more you teach young players about the differences in the game, different styles, different systems. I think the better are that they are equipped to, to sort of take an opportunity. But with a B team, they're so close to us and, and literally, you know, 
we see each other train that you know if we're taking a lad from from the b team to the first i don't want them to think they're going into a different world you know because it's hard enough anyway yeah. it's such a big step you know physically mentally it's exhausting you know and, and for them to do that step up so if they've already got some familiarity around the way we play the way we train that's going to give them their best chance of making an impression there. So that's the reason, you know, I wouldn't do it with the teams below that. There's elements of it, but I'm not a big one on just playing one system and all that, because like I said, as young players, you need to learn everything. You know, you yeah. need to learn to play in a back four, a back five, play individually, you know, dribble as much as you want, do all those things. But with a B team, I thought it was really important that there's an alignment there. And and like I said, to be fair, I mean, Mick and, 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 and Daz, you've only had 12 months at it, but you could just see the progression during the year. And then I saw it when the boys came across and trained with us, they just handled themselves so much better. They, they weren't sort of, apart from, like I said, the, the general quality in terms of what we were doing, there was an understanding there, you know? See, when we were here as well, another big thing was like you had to earn your place in the first team. It didn't they just given, get given to you. Uh, ben Summers and Rokovat have played a bit towards the end of the season. What have you seen in them? What have they done when they've came in training? That, that, that's yeah, seen just them that. Yeah, you know, I've just seen them. I've seen growth in them. I mean, that's what you're looking for in young players. Look at when you bring them across the first time. Or you, unless they're an exceptional sort of talent, you kind of know they're going to struggle a little bit. So then you're looking. What are you looking for? You're looking for progression. You know, the second, the third time have they improved, develop, have they used the lessons learned? Because that's how you know a player progresses. And both those lads, um, yeah, have been outstanding in terms of their progress, you know, every time they've been up. And, and to be fair, they've been with us probably since the World Cup break, they've been training with us full time. So through that period, I've seen them be, improve as players, you know, adjust to the speed, adjust to the tempo, and then sort of bring in their own personality. So, you know, they, the games they've played, they, as you said, they've earned, on, on the back of being in front of us every day. It's not what they've done so much in the B team. They did that at the start of the year. Yeah. It's just being in front of us every day. You know, it's like anything else. You have to earn the trust of your teammates. You have to earn the trust of the, the coaching staff and the manager to get an opportunity and they've done that. Again, this is no saying how old you are, but yeah. do you do you remember that feeling of being a young kid going up to team with the first team? Did you have the same nerves oh, that, that we all had? Oh, that long ago, let me oh. think. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just, 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 we used to walk the training Do you want me to get a wheelchair to take you back yeah. over to the... We used to work 30 miles to training. Oh, sure. and, um, those big leather balls. Um, yeah, no, it was, um, it was different. Yeah, it was different. It, it, just the world's different. I mean, back then it was just single swim, mate. You know, you got it was what sort of single and, swim? Just throw in, yeah. get thrown in, and if you you survive, you survive. If you don't, you know, there wasn't a lot of, especially where I was, a lot of coaching, a lot of guidance, a lot of it was just, you know what, you're training with the first team, off you go, and you know, just life in general back then. You walk into a dressing room, you were the youngest. You were the target of, you know, what we'd probably call today bullying, you know, they're just the way, but it was the way they tried to test you out, you know, yeah. when you played, invariably the youngest guy copped all the physical sort of contact to, again, to, to see whether you, so it was, there was no protection there. They, they just put you out there. And, um, at that time it was, you know, it was probably the right way to go about it because the world was different and, and made a man of you. You had to, if you were going to survive at that level, you had to grow up pretty quickly, you know? It's different now, and I think you can do that because the world's different. Um, kids are brought up differently. That they're they're, they're, they're kind of a little bit more knowledgeable than, than we were. We were kind of very naive in thinking, well, whatever they say, I've got to do, or you know, whatever they demand, I've got to do now. You know, young people are different, so you've got to you've got to provide a different environment for them to be the best they can be. Mm. Scottish Cup final. I mean, is that a world record? Is this okay, is world it? record? Incredible. How's your preparation has been? Leading up to the final, yeah, it's it's <coughs> look, it's been good. It, it, it's fair to say this last period, it's it's, it's been a, you know obviously a little bit different. Once we won the title at Hearts, and yeah, you know, for all intents and purposes, you want you know you, you talk about maintaining standards, and we want to keep playing well. But the reality of it is, the lads have you know you, you've run a race, you've run a marathon, you've gone through the finish line. When you go through the finish line, you collapse, mm. and then I'm asking them to go. You know what? There's another actually hundred meters, and they're going well why <laughs> i've already gone you know but so you know that was hard i think in this first couple of weeks and, and i understood that it's a reason i sort of changed the team so much because i thought you know what I'll, I'll take a few people out of the firing line put some other guys in but again that then disrupts cohesiveness and that so fair to say the first but but always in the back of my mind i knew come trophy day and cup day they'll be back on it you know and it was like we had to have those two three weeks where yeah, they could just recover from 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 what they've achieved and then go again. So 
you know, fair to say the last sort of last week and leading into sort of trophy day and and uh, this week boys are, are really focused looking forward to it it's a big day i mean cup final was just a big occasion i didn't watch it last year because you know i was still you know wasn't happy that we weren't there so um you know just being part of that occasion it's a final match on the calendar um it's going to be a great occasion and, and we're looking forward to it so you said about that players that player feeling of running a marathon the race just a, do you still do you get that feeling a wee bit yeah, as well absolutely. As manager? I, yeah. I, I said to people generally I, I reckon through my career i've probably got the worst record in friendly games of anybody in the world i i, I, I lose friendly games because i know that i don't have that edge and if i don't have the edge the players aren't because i use them in a different way you know my yeah. mentality is different if there's a game of no consequence it doesn't do anything for me i need something to be on edge to be at my best so if i'm like that there's it's invariably going to filter through to the players you know so yeah I, 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 yeah i was the same you know as much as i wanted to get them up for those games because yeah, there's still games, you know, especially at Celtic, you're expected to win every week. One of them was against Rangers, you don't want to lose that game. So, and it's not nice losing, you know, the, the feeling after the game wasn't great. You know, it wasn't like we said, oh, well, it doesn't matter. No, we boys were gutted, I was gutted, and, you know, we weren't, we weren't happy with it. But, you know, like I said, there's this human nature that gets involved in that. And I think since then, like the last couple of weeks, I can see that we're, we're back on it. Is the treble something you thought about when you first come here? Because not a lot of managers do here. Do, do you make plans, like long-term plans, I want to come yeah, here? No, right? you, you can't. What you've got to... I, mean, I think what we're really good at is because, you know, I think... I'm trying to think, but I reckon the Reb, treble talks probably started, you know, three months ago, you know. Yeah. The lads have been really good at just saying that, you know, we're going to focus on the next game, next game, next game. And that's and that's why when we got to Hearts and we won it, then the next game you go, well, it doesn't really mean anything. What does, how do we change our site? But we haven't really thought about the treble and, and, you know, probably up until now, up until yesterday, now you're thinking, OK, we've got a chance to make it a really special year now. So that's where kind of the focus comes. So do you do you tell the players that, like, this doesn't get done? Are the players aware of that or do you need to tell, like, this, doesn't, this isn't something that happens a lot at clubs? Yeah, um, I think you try and, you know, you try and tell them that. The flip side of that is this, this club's done it fairly regularly recently, you know, so you don't also want to fall into the trap of thinking that, you know, you'll get an opportunity every year because you won't. Mm. That's the reality of it. This this recent history of this football club has been extraordinary. You know, when you think, it, you know, to win a quadruple, treble, and now potentially another one within a space of seven years or something, it's, it's just ridiculous, you know, because it's not just... Obviously, the league is the league, but cup competitions, you know, like anything can happen in any game, you know? Yeah. And if you look at us this year, we've had to beat Rangers in both. You know, we've had tough draws in, in both. Yeah. We've had to beat Hearts away from home. Um, so it's not like they've had, we've had an easy draw to get here. So we, when you put all that in together, I think the players know that, it, you know, they've earned this opportunity and, and they don't want to let it slip. And so you said you didn't watch this, the, the final last year. Did you use that this season when you played Rangers in the semi-final? Yeah, well, it wasn't using it, but it was a good reminder because that's yeah. where we, we stumbled last year against Rangers, same 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 game, same sort of. And, you know, we kind of said, well, that's, you know, we don't want to have that feeling again. So you use that as a little bit of a motivation. And there's, to be fair, there's a fair bit of trash talk going around, so I didn't have to say too much, you know. Um, I, I, I kind of let others speak for me in that. I think the, the boys were well aware, okay, well, let's do our talking on the pitch. So, um and the boys were good at staying disciplined. So I didn't really have to motivate them. But in terms of just preparation, just every cup game is the same for us. You know, we, we, we practice penalties the, the whole week before a cup game, knowing that, you know what, if it's going to go to penalties, I don't want us to think that we haven't prepared mm -hmm. just because yeah. we're playing it, you know, whoever we're playing. So yeah. that's from the first round onwards. So already they're thinking differently from the start of the week because every day we'll take penalties. So they think, okay, this is a different game. Mm -hmm. It's a game of consequence. I said to the boys, we don't review cup losses. Why do you want to review a cup loss? It's finished. It's gone. So if we lose the game, we don't sit there and review it. It's finished. The league game's different. You can lose a league game and then we review because we've got another one. Mm -hmm. So they know all these things that it's a different mindset when you go into cup games. Did you expect to, for, for the process to happen this quickly on the verge of treble within two years? I, and dominate and basically. Yeah, look, I don't, I, I don't go into it with expectations. What I go into it is, is with, well, you know what? I know that this is what I have to do, and if I do it, we'll get success. And and I've never sort of had goals or ambitions because I don't want to limit it. You know, if I, if I said in the first year, look, we just got to win a trophy. Well, we won a trophy in my first four months. The players would then go, well, okay, maybe we don't have to do anything else. No, you know, just because you won one. So, you know, we started to 
last year saying, you know what, we want to try and win everything. And this year we try and win everything. And the next year try and win everything. So that, you know, you're not putting a limit on what the players can possibly achieve. Because I think most people like to have a little bit of a target of or what are we trying to do here? You know, you can't just send them off aim aimlessly. And my thing is, well, I'm not going to give you a specific target, but what I'm going to say to you is we're going to be a better football team than last year and see where that takes us. If we're better than we won a double last year, if we're better than we were last year, we've got a decent chance of being successful. See that performance against Rangers, it was different to the usual dominant performances and the second half, the defence got a lot of the credit. See from the, sort of the previous year, was that something maybe you, you've worked on differently? No, it's a fair question. No, it's, it's not, it's, it's more of a mindset thing of, you know, the more you're in the game and, and you have more experiences. So that what did that experience last year teach us is that, you know what, we went out there trying to win a game football like we did every week, but in a, in, a, in, a, in a cup game, there's consequences, so you need to be switched on the whole time. So that's in their consciousness. Like I said, league's a little bit different because you can have a small misstep in the league and recover and go again. So I think that game just went that way where the boys felt comfortable that, you know, once we got in front, that, you know what, we're, we feel strong enough to be able to maintain and, and hopefully be able to hit them, you know, if they're going to open up, we can hit them on the break so they're comfortable in that space. So it wasn't any direction for me or working on stuff. It's just the players feeling more confident of being in that situation, saying, well, you know what, this is our role here is to, to see this game out and win and get to a, to a final. And whereas last year, maybe because we, 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 we'd won the League Cup, they just thought we'd just go out there and try and win this game. And, and, you know, we hit the front in that game and then Rangers came back and then it went to extra time. It was a tight game. But, you know, I think they managed themselves better during the game because of the experience of last year. See, just in terms of a talk about preparation, how do you plan training? Quite fascinated by this. Is it, is it week to week you plan it? Is it month by month? Is it blocks um, that you work in? All of it. So the, you've got sort of your, your, your month to month where you try and put up, you know, a program together you think will we'll sort of suit what we've got ahead because you kind of know the fixturing probably a month in advance. Um, from then you go into a weekly thing and you say, well, we've we got three games, we've we got two, you know, one game a week or, or a midweek game. Um, you know, what's what's the games be like? Do we need an easier week? So then uh, you do the weekly planner and you say, okay, this week we'll probably need to taper off a little bit or we need to put a bit of work into them. And then you do it on a daily basis, you know. Um, John Kennedy's sort of in charge of the detail of that and, and sort of we'll sit down on a monthly basis, then we'll sit down on a weekly basis. And on a daily basis, he'll run it past me the day before and say, look, this is what I'm planning for tomorrow. He speaks to the sports science staff, the medical team, the other coaches, goalkeeping coach Stevie Woods and says, well, this is what we're trying to get out of tomorrow. Does it tick all the boxes? Yes. Show it to me and away we go. Because I, I was listening to a couple of interviews recently about Eddie Howe and Guardiola and they were talking through their typical day. Eddie Howe was saying he gets in the training ground for six o'clock and Guardiola's like, I'm still sleeping till half past eight. Well, what kind of are you? Are you in early or does it does it vary? No, I, I get in early. I mean, I, I'll get up. I mean, I get up six o'clock sort of, but just my body clock gets me up at that time and then sort of I'll pot around the house for a little bit till the kids get up. And then I'm usually in here about 7.38 every day. Um, I like quiet time, sort of. That's where I get to think and, and sort of because once people start getting in the building, invariably... You know, my my sort of office gets busy, so I get in early just to just to relax and you know, just have a cup of coffee and quiet and do my thinking for the day. And then, you know, I usually stick around till you know four thirty, five o'clock, depending on what we're doing in the evening, and, and get myself home. For next season, Ange, how do you get this team better than it already is? Um, Stop so, doing these interviews. Stop doing these interviews. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. They're good for me. They they keep me sharp. These interviews. <laughs> um, um, I think it doesn't change because it's almost like we do not like we do. We do we do it on a daily basis. You come in here every day. Every day is an opportunity to be better. Why do you want to waste a day of training? Like, why do you train? You don't train just to say I've trained for two day, two hours today. And that's it. You train so that you can try and get better. You know, in any other sport, that's what happens, and football's no different as far as I'm concerned. You know, if somebody wins the Masters in golf, the next day they're out there on the putting green practicing their putting. You go, why are you practicing your putting? You're the best golfer in the world. But that's what he has to do because he knows that fine margins will get you better. Tennis players out there practicing his serve or his backhand. Footballers are no different. You know, you, you come in every day, and that period you're out in the field or that period you're in the gym or that period you're sitting down with the, with the coach going through the video – is an opportunity to improve. Yeah? So you're not going to improve a lot, but just a little bit. So if you do that every day, then that becomes part of who you are. So you're not just walking in, doing training, getting your bag and going home. 
every day is an opportunity to improve for everybody, for me, for the players, everyone. So how do I improve them next year? But by just continually focusing on that, you know, and you don't get to this, even this week, it's not about saying, well, we've got four training sessions, let's get them, let's do them and get ready for the cup final. Now these four training sessions are an opportunity for us to be at our best in the cup final. So every day we come in and say, all right, what, how do we get a little bit better today? Maybe we didn't, maybe we just kind of stayed at the level we are, but we, we're not going to waste that time not trying to explore that option. You know? Tio, mate, you said just something that uh, you, uh, you touched on there about video, because I've seen a couple of clips. Is that where you do most of your tactical stuff on the video? Most of it, yeah, because I don't like, you know, when we train, we train, we train hard. You know, we, we only train for 60, 70 minutes and I don't want to do my coaching out there. You know, I want the players to already have the pictures in their head so that when they're out there and training, they train. So if we're doing an exercise and it's about possession, build up, counter pressing, pressing, they've already got that information and then they're, they're executing out there. And then if it hasn't worked and we go back, have a look at it and then we do it better the next day. So rather than me sort of, or any of the other coaches sitting out there and stopping it and saying, look, when the ball's here, you've got to be there. And because if you look at the way we play, how do we play? We just want to be relentless. We don't stop. Mm. So I've got to condition the players to train that way. So if you're starting training every day, then the, the message Correct. is different. Yeah, it is. And, and invariably they switch off. So even if they're having a drink break here, it's, you know, the drink station is in between the two drills. So they finish a drill, have a drink and go to the next drill. They're not going to the side, having a bit of a chat, then get back into it. You're training, you're training. So for 60, 70 minutes, I've got them training, their minds focusing on our football. And if you think about a game of football, how long does it last? between 50 and 60 minutes, so 25, 30 minutes each half where they've got to be on it. Well, we train that here. Brilliant. So, sorry, just to go on it, but do you video analyze training as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll take clips of training, yeah, for wow. sure. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if, if we're working on something specific, um, we won't, sometimes we'll, the coaches will use that individually with the players. So each coach has got responsibility for three or four players and he, he might show it to somebody individually it's come out of. If it's something we've worked on, um, JK will put it on their sort of the boys WhatsApp group say boys have a look at this this is from today's training it's all sort of drawn up so that they know what they're looking at um, and if it's something that's really specific that I need to tell the whole group we'll, we'll do it in a team meeting. Do they need to run their clips past you before they show the players them so that you agree with what's been said to the players? Yeah if, if they're in any doubt yeah. yeah but you know again most of my work in terms of that was done at the start of last year and you know I think you know, from what people tell me, the feedback I get, I'm pretty clear on what I want. So there's clarity in the whole building. So if there's something uncertain, say, you know, they'll run it past me and say, look, we're thinking of showing them this, this is why. If I said, yeah, no, go for it. If not, then, but most of the time it's stuff that, you know, that we, they know that I'll be looking for come, whether it's a training or it's a, the game analysis. Right. Can I get your number? No chance. <laughs> no chance? Absolutely no chance. I, I've got one more question. That's not the well. first time that's been said to you either, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a girl, isn't it? She's like a girl. Uh, well, the boys, are, they've started playing. What kind of dad do you, do you coach uh, for the side? Do you analyse nah, them? No, no, no. Never? No, no, no. Well, ever get to the stage? No. What if they become really good in an no, academy? 14, 15, never? No, I hate that, mate. I mean, it's hard. I feel sorry for them at the moment because if I'd, I, I've hardly been to any sort of their games and training. I just tend to drop them off because... You know, I don't, I just want them to love the game like I did. They don't need me by the side because it ends up, you know, invariably people want to talk to me and then they, you know, which one's your boy and all that. I don't, I don't need them to, to feel that way. I just want them to play their football. And uh, to be fair, their mum's harder on them than I am, mate. She she gives them pelters when they get home <laughs> about their running and their effort. And yeah, yeah, no. And so. has she only picked that up for being married to you? No, nah, she, she tells people. me as well too, mate. So, no, she's, well, she analyses selling. Uh, she'll she give me. She'll, if I've copped it the last couple of weeks with our performances, don't worry. Um, no way. In no uncertain terms, she tells me that um, it's not up to scratch. And uh, to be fair, she's the only one that can, so she gets away with it. But, wow. uh, it's been yeah. incredible, isn't it? Uh, it always is. I think if Celtic won the cup final, a free share of whiskey together. Oh, I think, uh, you can do that. Well, Come what's on. my prize, though? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh wait, oh, uh, sorry. You quoted Tommy Burns at the end of the game. Yeah. He coached us as kids. Did We've he? Obviously, yeah. got a lot of time. Look, for I mean, obviously, I, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, he'd passed away by the time I got here. And, but I, I watched the play, and I've obviously read a lot about him. And um, anyone, you know, within this sort of club that came into any sort of contact with him, just talks about him, not as a player, just as a person. That just unbelievable you know and it's almost 
it's almost like he's still alive. His presence is still there because when people talk about him, they talk about him, not in the present sense, but he's, it, that he's, he's still around in terms of what he believed and, and the way he was with people, you know? It's the, and there's no greater thing in life, you know? You can achieve all you want and have success and all that, but how you make people feel, uh, even after you're gone, is just priceless, mate. And that guy, like I said, um, unfortunately I never got to meet him, but you know, the way people talk about him is just, it's just, um, it's unbelievable, you know? It's, it's uh, I'm, you know, just, just a great man. He'd love to have you play as well. Because when we were yeah, kids, that's how we wanted us to play. Attack, We've always attack said that, all the time. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. What a man. Manager of the season. Let's go and get a whiskey. Right, let's get a whiskey. In your office. Can we get you look in the office? Um, yeah, no. Just for five no, minutes, no. please. Restraining order coming sooner. Restraining order 100%. Ange, thanks very much. Thanks, boys. Thank you, guys.